Welcome back to an Insight special, and we're talking to former Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Kasyanov, now a vocal opponent of Vladimir Putin. I want to talk to you about your activities as a member of the opposition, probably the most prominent, most recognizable one. And in the last couple of years, especially the last year, I mean, I have to say I've been worried about you watching what's been going on in Russia. You have been threatened. You have been followed. You have had a video a tape that was aired on Russian television of you uh, in some kind of, they called it a sex sting, which was aired broadly all over Russian television. Who, do, who did that? Who's behind it? Oh, of course, it's Secret Services, FSB. That's only they capable to do this, just to, to, to first to arrange the following me and uh, just and to install equipment in my, my property, in my flat. That was done there. Uh, it's, everything started uh, just, uh, I would say, after uh, intervention into Ukrainian affairs. When we, Boris, uh, Boris Nemtsov and I, uh, leaders of opposition, just we led all those marches in the streets of Moscow, just protesting against just Putin's uh, intervention and annexation of Crimea. And then just, you know, one year after, Mr. Nemtsov, Boris Nemtsov, my friend and uh, political, political friend, was killed just 100 meters from, from uh, Kremlin wall. Shocking, shocking uh, uh, shooting of him. Shooting was murdered just uh, on, a, on, a, on a bridge, on, a, on a, the most secured and controlled by Secret Services place. With cameras that just Eight. happened not to be pointing in that direction at the time. Yes, that's what... Uh, uh, I would say very much disturbing, disturbing story. And I knew Nemtsov very well. I mean, I followed him when he was yeah. campaigning for mayor, even when he was trying to get back and have some political voice in yeah. Russia. And he he felt this need yeah, yeah, yeah. for to 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 reinvigorate yeah. the democratic movement in Russia. Did he think? Did he know that he was in danger? Uh, he not necessarily like you're asking me just whether, whether I have a fear or not, yes, we don't. But potentially just what's going on in my country, there's absolutely, there, there is a, such a danger. There is, uh, I would say, should be fear. And Nemtsov also didn't, didn't did, he didn't have security and he was walking just, uh, just over the bridge and he was killed there. And after that, just I was the only leader of, of our party, Parnas People's Freedom Party. And then just I, all pressures just uh, appeared on me. They followed me everywhere. I go into one or another city city in Russia, meeting with people and some kind of pro-Kremlin hooligans just uh, throwing to us eggs, uh, tomato, or just even trying to beat. My team just protected me, but um, that was around for, for a year. This film, all just moving everywhere, following me in the restaurants, etc., etc., talking to people, they, everything just um, uh, 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 recorded, etc., etc. You were, I mean, you were, you were hit with pies, you were chased, you were assaulted. Yes, absolutely. You used to have security when I first followed you, when you ran for president. What happened to your Kremlin security? No, Kremlin security uh, was stopped just one year after my departure only. Just I had security, but uh, already not, not Kremlin, not, 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 not official security. And and during that campaign, campaign, just presidential campaign. But uh, if um, um, secret services would like to, to, to eliminate you, just you uh, would not be safe by using any security. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really work just from security from hooligans on the streets. That's okay. That, that's what I have now. <laughs> but uh, uh, actual oh, serious security, that's uh, not possible. Kadyrov, the Chechen leader, has posted a video of Mikhail Kesyanov in the crosshairs of a sniper rifle. Yeah. I mean, surely you take that seriously. Uh, I took this seriously, my family took it seriously, and I even just um, approached officially to, to, to FSB because it's um, uh, their, their responsibility and Federal Security Service. But the answer was just we didn't find anything wrong with this. They didn't find anything wrong? Yeah. It was like a joke they described it. And you? Have you changed the way you behave? Have you changed how you move? I mean, I don't want the then details, again, just, but I mean, again, I you, you can change whatever you want. Just, but it doesn't. It doesn't mean just you're secured enough. Uh, the, the issue is just you. You continue your fight, or you stop and escape to other country. Like many people just living here in London, for instance, or some. And, uh, some other countries here. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, why do you stay? Gary Kasparov, for instance, has left, and he's left the country, and he was involved in the opposition. And I, I saw him, I mean, shaking one day when he was arrested and jailed, and he understood physically how dangerous it was. Why do you stay? Somebody should continue, should continue to fight, continue to voice, 
and to explain to people. We have no access to television that uh, half of the country cannot hear anything, but then they, and the propaganda just, and they, in reality, half of people, half of the population believe that I'm some kind of uh, enemy, just foreign spy, agent, etc., etc. But other people, uh, I would say middle class people living in big cities, of course, they rely on saying just that the only hope we have. And just for these people, uh, I continue, I should continue uh, fighting there, at least to be vocal and to describe people what is actual reasons for worsening the whole uh, living standards in Russia and what, uh, what's wrong Mr. Putin undertakes. I think a lot of people don't understand what's happened in Russia, and that is that under Yeltsin, you had the business community that was really involved in engaging Europe in, in liberal democracy. And after Putin came to power and started clamping down on people like Khodorkovsky, businessmen to a large degree have said, I'll do business, but I won't touch politics and I won't speak out because they'll lose everything they have. Is that still the case? Yeah, that's what Mr. Putin wanted. And Khodorkovsky, Yuko's case, that was exactly the case to demonstrate to all other business community just that is not appropriate uh, behavior just to be involved and to finance political parties just without special permission of Mr. Putin. That was one of the reasons why Khodorkovsky was uh, put in jail and spent 10 years there. Do you think Putin's going to stay? There are all sorts of rumors about him, rumors about his health, rumors about whether he'll run again in 2018. I think he will run because he has no other, other way for all those deeds already happened. Just I think he has no other, other way. I mean, Ukraine, I mean, MH17, which now just the, 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 the Dutch investigators already, already just describe a lot. I think just Aleppo disaster, what happened there with the Russian aviation, I think that's already a lot. If when, when French president saying that is, that is um, uh, war crime and, uh, and some other leaders saying this, I think that's already a lot. Nobody before just was brave enough to use such words. But now just a really clear explanation. That's why if health is okay, I think it's absolutely inevitable to run and to stay forever. Does he have designs on the Baltics, on Estonia, Latvia, uh, Lithuania? I, it, it, it depends on the situation in Ukraine. If somehow uh, the whole problem in Ukraine would be digested by the West, or you, uh, the, the Western leaders would change their policy, it will not be consistent enough. And this case, you can expect other operation somehow just testing uh, NATO chat uh, article, article 5. I don't know, uh, because a lot of people, even, even, even here in the West, they don't believe that uh, the NATO would um, perform appropriately defending those countries. So what happens when Trump talks about re-engaging him and doing a deal? What signal is he sending, whether he knows it or not, to the Kremlin? Uh, I, think, I, think, I think he wants some kind of uh, actual like business transaction. What, and in fact, Mr. Putin also are prepared for that. But for what? Well, what it could be on their expectation. I think for Mr. Trump, that's important just to, 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 uh, to fight with ISIS. It means international coalition. Mr. Putin doesn't want, because international anti-terror coalition means Assad should not be uh, in power. But Mr. Putin goes vice versa together with the Iranian authority. That's the major uh, standing point. And, and uh, opposition, more so-called moderate Syrian opposition, they're saying just we, we, cannot, we cannot accept. What for we fight it and what for just uh, thousands of people died. That's why just I, I don't think that there could be a solution found. I don't Do you think Trump is naive in his approach to Putin? Oh, he should test everything. And that's why, that's why I think it's good to try to discuss one and thought and et etc. Et all the issues. I think it's a right approach. But the issue is just what we'll have, what the outcome we'll get. Just that's what we all of us concerned. Some people believe that just these populistic statements we, we hear <coughs> looks just as an uh, unacceptable transaction in the future. But I don't think Mr. Trump will come to this. It's only, only coverage, but in reality it would be much more serious. Every time I know somebody who goes back to Russia right now and they talk about life inside Russia with sanctions, the first thing they tell me is, if you're coming, could you bring us some cheese? <laughs> what, what is life like right now? Uh, yeah, for, for, business, for, for business people just who used to live in uh, I would say some kind of European conditions um, for middle class living in big cities, they uh, already used for some kind of standards. Right now, these standards disappeared. 
that's for them mostly that's noticeable for middle class people, but not for poor people. They were poor, and now just they continue to be poor even more. It's not so so visible for them. But but with no pressure on Putin, no pressure on Putin, because as I said, propaganda, and they say we better just be hungry, but we fight with those Americans. It will be very difficult to to, to change anti-American spirit, Mr. Putin imposed for many years. That's why just that's one another, another feature of future deals with um, the President Trump. Will you make a promise before you leave today? You're going to take care of yourself when you go back. Uh, I'll try to do this. Thank you. Mikhail Kasyonov, the former Prime Minister of Russia, thank you for joining us. A final word on Putin before we close. When he was appointed on New Year's Eve 1999, the Russian Constitution said that a president could only serve two terms. Putin changed the rules to make that two consecutive terms so he could stand for president again in 2018 and remain in power until 2024, the longest period for a Russian leader since Stalin. Maybe even Vladimir Putin might think, is that too long? That's all for now. I'm Dana Lewis, and that was Inside.